Okay. So here we are live for our first Marriage Matters Google Hangout, what marriage is really like. I have a few of my friends joining me who will all introduce themselves and share a little bit about their uh, marriage or um, divorce for one of our, our, <laughs> our participants. Um, but before we get started, in honor of Women's History Month and supporting black-owned businesses, I want to share a product that I just started using. Um, it's called Moni Skin Care. It's a great product line. I found her on Instagram. I used to use Mary Kay for my skin, and it was a little harsh, a lot of chemicals. So I started using these all-natural products, and so I got her Tea Tree Cleanser, which has been really good so far, um, as well as her um, Green Tea Facial Toner as well as some cocoa butter cream that I use on my face after I do all that, and then a green tea detoxifying mask. So she sent all that. It was about $42, which kind of seems expensive, but that's how much I paid for my Mary Kay. And it lasts a really long time. I've only been using it for a few days, and I've already you know, seen it work. So if you um, are on Instagram, you should check her out. She's amazing. She's really nice, very responsive, send things on time, good customer service. So with all that said, we'll get started. Um, so basically, we're just talking about, you know, some of the things we go through as married couples. Um, my husband, I had to ask my husband how long we've been together today because I couldn't calculate the years are just going by so fast. So we've been together married for almost three years in July <laughs> and we've been together for almost five years so it's like four and a half almost five it feels like so much longer sometimes but that's how long we've been together we were together about a year and a half before we got married um, and things progressed pretty quickly after that so Akia uh, you can go ahead and share <laughs> how long okay. you've been married and stuff I've been married since October of this past year. My husband and I have been together for three years, three and a half years, and we've known each other for 12 years. Awesome. Kira? We can't hear you. You're muted. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Come in. Okay, my name is Kira. Um, my husband's name is Jeremy. We have been married for a year. Uh, it'll be a year at the end of this month and we were together for about 15 months before getting married um, and that's it. Just joining the hangout mostly to kind of soak up the wisdom from uh, <laughs> the old married ladies, you know, three years up there. I can't believe it's been that long. Who um, are you telling <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, excited to meet the new faces and, and good to see old faces. Yes. So my friend Brianna just joined us. Um, hey, Brianna, we were just talking about how long we've been married or been together. I know you haven't gotten married yet, but you're on the way going to your old Joel Osteen, you know, counseling sessions and stuff. So you can share how long you've been with your soon-to-be fiancé. How long have you been with Dewey, Brianna? <laughs> Wait, you're muted. Hold on. I muted you, but then I unmuted you. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, no. I muted. Okay. What about now? No. Okay. We'll come back. I don't know why it's not working. We'll come back, okay? All right. Go ahead, Nicole. You're muted. Unmute yourself. Girl, I couldn't figure out how to unmute myself. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, <laughs> hi, everybody. I'm Nicole. Um, I am, look like Brianna, not married yet, hoping to get to where you guys are. I am engaged. I've been engaged for six months. Um, and I've been with my fiance for a little over four years. Awesome. Okay, we'll come back to you, Stacey. Okay, so, Saina, this is my childhood friend. How long have you and your husband been married? Hello, everyone. Um, my husband and I have actually been married for going on eight years um, this August. And we um, got married about nine months after meeting each other. Awesome. <laughs> Whitney. <laughs> It's so dramatic. That's so sweet. It's like a whirlwind romance. I love it. Um, 
Hi everybody, I'm Whitney. My husband's name is Jay. Um, we have been married for about four and a half years. It'll be five years in November, so maybe not really four and a half. Four and some change. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think we dated for uh, two years when we got married, something like that. I'm like Ernest. I don't really know. Um, I was like 22 when we met. I think I'm 29 now. I don't know. We've been married four and a half or four and some change. Yeah, so we've been married as long, almost as long as Adam and I were together. Because I think we met. I met him right after that. So. Right. Remember the day after the wedding is the first time we met Adam. Ain't that, you bad. took us to the. You took us somewhere. You're you picked us up and took us to our car or something. The day after. <gasps> yeah, because we went out with Adam and uh, Homeboy after the rehearsal. Remember oh. Evan? <laughs> That's when I first met Adam. And I met him first the day after the wedding. So you guys met. You met after my rehearsal. Yeah, after your rehearsal, we went from the law. From we went from the where were we at the Marriott or the the hotel downtown? And yeah. Then we went to meet Adam and Elliot at uh at Ben's next door. Who's Elliot? Adam's Girl. friend. Ain't nobody worried about me. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. But yeah, Adam, you know, treated us. <laughs> okay, Brianna. Can we hear you now? I st you might have to take off that Bluetooth. We cannot hear you. Okay, try now. Nope. I don't think you're muted. No. Do you have a regular headset? I can't hear you. What? I think if she presses her face and then, you know, when the mute options come up. Oh, so press, press your face, like, on the phone, and then you can unmute your... But she doesn't look muted. Okay. I well, see her as muted. You see her as muted? Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're, you muted yourself, so you have to unmute yourself by touching it because you're on your phone. You have to touch it and then unmute yourself. Because I could hear you at first. Okay, Stacy, you can share your wisdom. How long were you married, and how long were you guys dating? Well, I was married for six years. Uh huh. She was we dated when we were. I was like eighteen. No, mm -hmm. I was sixteen, and then I got married when I was nineteen. So that's my um, first turn around the go with the whole marriage thing, and then we divorced after six years. But um, fast forward past that. Now I'm in a relationship that's been going strong for a minute, so I just wanted to connect with you girls, see how, you know, what I can get for my Baby second part, time around the go. Pause. <laughs> but you're not going to do is no real. revelations. What? Uh, <laughs> wait a minute, guys. Hold up. <laughs> is it that guy from your job? <laughs> that's what I want to know. Is it him? He got First money. Of all, wait. No, it's, no, it's not. Okay. Dang. You got money. <laughs> Listen. You know what? I'm All not I know him. is I think I love he. You know, uh, this, what was it? What was that with your calm show and living color? What? Listen, I just feel like you know we get into that point. I just want to you know surround myself with other married girls because the first time I was married, I was the only person my age married. So all of my friends were like single, college. I was home married. So this time I'll be able to be around my friends that are married. Oh. Hold up. <laughs> this is Karen, and I'm still in shock. <laughs> this is a revelation, and I'm so happy. Thank you, guys. You know, what's the Google Hangout special? <laughs> I'm going to meet him. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> There's something wrong with y'all. Okay. Ernie, if you were here, you'd want to meet him too, and you know it. So it's oh, it. Yes. Oh. Watch. Okay, <laughs> Brianna. Once we fix your sound, you can join in um, whenever. Okay, so to get things started in a positive light, um, I'm gonna share the one thing that my husband does that you know, even when I'm really, really upset, it always brings me back to my reality that this is a good man, a good brother, and um, I don't want to lose him because he is that good man. And it's really, you know, no matter how much we can argue all day and all night, 
Um, if I'm hungry, you can't make me something. <laughs> you have to respect the mic. <laughs> respect the mic. He will make me something to eat, even in his anger. He'll be like, "Oh, you hungry? I'm gonna make you an egg sandwich." You know, it's just that to me is just a true sense of love that you know I don't have because when I'm mad, them pots are clanking empty. Because I'm not going to make nothing for you. But the opposite is for him. Like, he still shows, like, you know, he's still really, really nice to me no matter how much we argue and fight and stuff like that. Like, if I'm hungry or, you know, that'll usually, that's usually what breaks our, you know, silence. He's like, you hungry? And I'll be like, yeah, I'm hungry. And then, you know, things just kind of get back, <laughs> back to normal that way. And that's kind of the one thing I really, really love about him that no matter what happens, it's like, you know, he, uh, he, that shows me how great and how much he still cares about me despite of what he said to me or what I said to him in our argument. So um, let's start with the the one who's been married the longest. Saina, can you share that one thing that your husband does that just makes you feel like, oh, I know this man loves me? Oh, God. Um, you ain't got to go to church on us. Just, you know, <laughs> share something real, real simple because I know how you do. Okay, the Holy Ghost will come up in here. <laughs> He does a lot of things. There's a lot of things that he does. Um, but for me, I think the most important thing for me is that we actually have um, a son that I had prior to us getting married. And so he has taken in my son as his own. So for me, every time I see him with my son, that is a constant reminder for me um, of how much he loves me because we all know that it is hard to find a baby daddy that wants to be around their kids, never mind a man who's not really the father. Exactly. That is a blessing. Okay, that was and amen, amen, amen. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um Brianna, is is your sound working now? I, I think I fixed it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you can share how long you've been dating and um you know, your all future plans. Yeah. Um, okay, so me and, is this my, is that me right there? <laughs> That's you. I don't know why I look like that, because I can see myself. <laughs> I don't um, know how to work this. Yo, I'm sorry. Um, but um, me and Dewey, we've been together six months. I'm trying to work this thing. I don't know how to work it. Um, we've been together six months. Um, it's been um, a very interesting relationship. I really, really love him. Um I think that's the first guy I've ever been with that we've made a conscious decision to get in tune with the Lord. Um, and we go to church, you know, every Sunday. Um, we go to premarital counseling. Um, and just for me, it's just the fact that he wants to do these things. And even though I, I, get, I guess it gets hard at times because we're, we're two different people. We're trying to learn one another, but we're also trying to build something. Um, and our niece can uh, tell you guys, like, I'm all, I kind of have a very low tolerance level, um, and I'm working on that. Um, and he teaches me to be patient. Um, and so that's something that I, I really, really love about him. Aww. So it's a, it's, a, it's a learning experience, but it's, it's worth it. Yeah. Okay, Akia. What's uh, up? I've been sitting here trying to think. I guess it's the fact that my husband allows me to be me, um, even with all my moodiness or with my ideas and my super bad shopping and spending habits. <laughs> Still, he's okay with it. So when the UPS man stops, you know, drops something off at the front door, he'll call me and say, you know, what did you buy today? <laughs> and, for example, I am baby prepping for my second baby that <laughs> does not exist yet. But I bought a double stroller. Oh, wait, hold on. No ham on me. <laughs> wait, hold on. <laughs> You're not pregnant? Not yet. I said I'm baby prepping. I got to prepare for this one. I wasn't ready for the first one. <laughs> oh, he has the patience that I need. Mm -hmm. okay. So he's very patient regardless of what I do. I love it. Okay. Kira? Well, he right here, so I'm about to well his head <laughs> up a little bit. So I will say <laughs> that... um. The one thing that he does, you know, to kind of bring me back to, to us, um, I think, you know, after we fight, he always, uh, you know, he always comes back, you know, with, he's, he's, you know, communication has been something that we're working on, uh, 
verbal communication. So I think um, whenever we have an argument, whenever we disagree, have a passionate fight, whatever, um, he always comes back with with what he's been thinking because he can't always express it in the moment, either because he's too angry or he doesn't have the words, he doesn't know how to articulate it at the time. But, you know, for the most part, he always comes back, you know, with an explanation for, you know, why he did what he did or why he said what he said, why he didn't say anything, et cetera. So I think, you know, in that moment when he comes back, I'm like, okay, like, now I remember why I'm here. Let me unpack my stuff. Like... <laughs> Drop it, Let me bring my silk pillow back in the bedroom. <laughs> Let me get your keys. Let me get your keys to your house. <laughs> okay, so have you gone? Have I? No, I haven't. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to say two things. There are two really good things I truly do love about my fiance, and I'm going to make the one. So I also have a child um, from before this relationship. Um, and he came into my daughter's life at a rough point. She had just lost her biological father. So it's, it's a really big um, deal for me to see them connect the way that they do because she doesn't have that father figure in her life. So he kind of stepped in open arms and loves her unconditionally, and I love that about him. Um, and then for, for me personally, guys, I'm super messy, okay? Not dirty, but messy. Like when I say messy, I will come in and take off clothes and throw them over the couch, throw them over the couch, throw them on the bed, and it irks his nerves. And regardless of how much it annoys him, he just picks up behind me oh, he's and, and <laughs> takes care of it all. I can't even complain. I can't complain. I come home from business trips to a clean house. He's the cleaner in our house. So I give him all praises for that. He cooks more than I do. I give him all praises for that. So I have a really good mood when it comes to those things. Yes, I love it. Whitney, what makes you all shaky about Jay? Oh, my God. Uh, I also have uh, two. Um, The first one, when we first started dating, I realized that um, he could be a spiritual partner for me. So, um... We pray. He's very quick to pray. Like, if I'm nervous, he'll be like, okay, let's just pray about it. Or um, he prays every time we get in the car when we drive before we drive somewhere. Um, you know, so and he's been praying with our, our little guy, Jackson, here. Um, and this, the second thing I um, really appreciate, um, I mean – about him is that how hands-on of a dad he is. He doesn't have a lot of baby experience, and he didn't have a father in his house himself, and he's, like, super hands-on with the baby. And he's a germaphobe, and he, you know, he digs right in with (laughs) messes, and um, he tries, and, you know, he'll take him by himself. You know, I can leave the house. You know, he doesn't hesitate with any of that so he's just been amazing as a dad and the entire time I was pregnant I didn't have to cook anything and I'm still not really cooking because he's doing all of that and it's just <laughs> okay so now that we start with the positive where marriage can be an amazing beautiful thing now we can go to the thing that sends you to the roof so um <laughs> go ahead Kia go ahead <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, I'll say, you know, and this kind of piggyback. Oh, on no, the oh, go ahead. I said Akia, but go ahead. Kia. Oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> um, I'll say, um, you know, it piggybacks on my positive because, um, you know, that, that lack of communication, like, you know, if I'm sitting there and I'm either pouring my heart out, you know, crying, you know, talking, 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 like, you know, having mouth diarrhea, and he just, like, won't say a word. And I'm like, <laughs> say something. I'm going to need you to say something. Like, you know, and I'm like, you know, it just makes me frantic. It, you know, makes me feel like, you know, I'm in it alone. You know, all of those things. So I think, you know, the the silence, you know, because he's a thinker. You know, he's not a, a quick talker. Um, you know, he's not super expressive. So I think that just drives me totally insane because, I talk, so <laughs> I over communicate. So the fact that you know I'm married to somebody that that's not their style, like it's definitely been some adjustments that we both had to make. Definitely. Okay, go ahead, Akia. You were you were ready. Yeah. 
I have the same exact problem. I talk too much and I have to gift the gab and my husband is very quiet so when we are, I don't really call it an argument but a disagreement where I'm really trying to talk through my point and he doesn't have anything to say or he's like, okay, conversation's over. And I'm like, how are you going to stop the conversation if I'm not finished? <laughs> so that that is my one, the communication part. Mm, okay, saying that, do you have that one thing that just sends you but you've been married. Well, you've been married for a while. Does that one thing ever go away? I guess that's where the wisdom starts to come in. <laughs> um, for me, I'd have to say that my one thing that is a pet peeve for me, I actually created this this monster, um, which is um, when I first got married. When we first got together, I was so independent, and so I didn't want him to open doors for me. I didn't want him to do um, pay for my food. I didn't want him to do anything for me. And now, eight years later, I'm saying, why don't you open the doors? Or why don't you do this? And he's saying to me, because I never had to do it before. So I would definitely say to any of you ladies that are newly married or about to get married, have him treat you exactly how you expect to be treated. Because it is hard to try to retrain something that you allowed to let go. That's good. That's that's good. That's really good. Okay. Um <laughs> Brianna, one thing. One thing, Brianna. <laughs> okay. Don't go in on just <laughs> one thing. Okay. <laughs> one thing that I love about him? No, that sends you to the roof. Oh girl, you know that one. <laughs> um, no, that's what I said one thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say the most annoying thing that kind of really gets me going is um, he has to be right all the time. Like, literally, he thinks he knows everything. Um, and the example is just a, um, a couple days ago, we bought um, my son some shoes, and he wears a size 2. That's what he wears currently. But I wanted to get him a size 3, because he's going to grow into the shoes. And he kept telling me that, oh, we, we got to get him a size two. We got to get him a size two. And so um, the sales associate was agreeing with me. And mind you, this is what she does for a living. And she's like, oh, yeah, he needs a size three. Like, he would not hear it. He would not hear it. He even measured my son's foot in the store to try to prove that he was right. It was, I was so embarrassed. And this is like, he does it all the time. And so instead of, like, getting upset, I just call her niece, and I just kind of bent to her. So that's my – that's the one thing, and he does it a lot. At first it was funny, but th this is who he is. I guess I'm learning to accept it, you know, but, yeah, he wants to be right literally all the time. doesn't matter what it is. Nicole, what's that one thing that sends you to the roof? Oh, my goodness. Okay. So my mama always told me that marrying a mama's boy was like you're you're 100 percent you're there. If you got a mama's boy, he'll take care of you like nobody's business because really? he loves he cares for his mama. That's oh. what my mama. That's what she always told me. Marry uh -huh. a mama's boy. Okay, I'm engaged to a mama's boy, and I want to pull my hair out a lot of times because it is like having a second child in your household. When I need him to step up and be that grown man person sometimes he acts as childish as my six-year-old and it is frustrating to the t and mm. his mother and his grandmother and his aunt they've all catered to him all of his life he's grown up with nothing but women this ain't it never drives me insane. <laughs> that is real because i've been through it still working through it and i really don't have advice on it <laughs> because it is it is something that is really hard to deal with. Uh, go ahead, Whitney. Share your one thing that sent you to the roof. Uh -huh. Trying to narrow it down. I've been trying to narrow it down. Um, I think it's the uh, the lecturing because he's an over communicator. He talks a lot. It's just, he will not stop. So it's the lecturing slash, like, nagging and, like, um, Akia, like, some. I feel like I'm, like, the role of your fiancé. I was like, okay, I got it. 
we're done. We're done here. And he's like, well, I, I'm still going. And, you know, and he just keeps on going and going and going. So that, that is what drives me up the wall. He's a, a nagger and he lectures. So that is the thing that really trips me up. <laughs> My one thing, I mean, a lot of y'all actually have touched on a few things that really take me there. But the one thing that really takes me there is when he says, but you said, like, something I may have said six weeks ago that doesn't even pertain to the situation at this moment. But you said, and then he continues to tell me, but you said, and I said, well, that's not what it applies right now. But that's not what you said. And so, therefore, we can't even get on to what we're dealing with at the moment because I said three weeks ago something that, pertain to that specific situation at that moment, but he got to take my words and drag it through this whole situation because that's what I said. That if, I mean, when I, because it's like, we can't, we can't even have a conversation because it becomes circular and I'm trying to get you to move beyond what I said and to where we can deal with what's going on right now. And that a lot of times that has stopped our progress on a conversation and left things at a standstill because now I have to turn into shutdown mode where I'm just like, okay, well, let me not say anything because then whatever I say today can then be used on me three weeks from now too. So I can't even say nothing. Like it's, that's one of the things that really just takes me to another level because it just like, it escalates things and now I'm trying to defend myself and I'm trying to say that's not what I really said. Your interpretation is wrong and all that. So that's really what takes me, um, Takes me to the roof. So, okay, that was everyone's been good, good so far. Um, so, this question you don't have to answer if you don't feel comfortable. So, when we first got married, so for us, we got married pretty quickly. You know, after we got married, I was already pregnant and we had just bought a house and we had all this stuff going on. Um, and I think that it already intensified our first few months of, of marriage. Uh, so, um, I feel like in the first few months, maybe yeah. even within even the first year, I probably thought about getting divorced often. Like, I can't do this. This is not what I signed up for. And I think a lot of it had to do with, I feel like I had lower expectations of what to expect, and I felt like he had higher expectations of what to expect. So he expected me to be, you know, cooking and cleaning and, you know, working and going to school and taking care of the baby and you know that was what my role like my role was very defined in his head whereas his role wasn't as defined and then when I tried to define my own roles like well that's not what a woman does I got a lot of comparisons to other people who I don't even know if they really exist uh, but this figurative woman who did all of these things or you know I, as Nicole would say um, compared to mom or grandma or auntie <laughs> and about the things that they would do. Um, and so I think in that first year, it just made it very hard because I feel like his expectations were really, really high of what he expected of me um, or what he expected coming, coming into our marriage. And I felt like my expectations were so low that that also kind of caused a problem because it just was like, well, I don't expect you to do anything but really take out the trash. Like, you know, I just didn't have a lot of expectations because I really didn't think about getting married. Like, that wasn't, you know, in my head. So I think in that first year, I probably thought about getting divorced. Like, I mean, I packed up my bags and went to Kara house before. That's why I had her keys to <laughs> the gates. You know, but just that, to me, the stress used to get so high to where it was so overwhelming that I just, like, I, it, it, to me, I felt, okay, I need to go because this ain't what life's about. Um, and... Everyone says the first year is hard, but no one ever says what's hard about it. You know what I mean? And I feel like for me, that first year was hard because of all of just lopsided expectations and just the pressure of, you know, trying to make it right or trying to make it work or, you know, be also being compared to other people who may be 10 years in. Um, and, you know, things may, of course, be seemingly a lot better for them because they've been together for so long. So for those who have been married, how was that first year for you guys? Stana or Whitney? Um, sorry, he's being a little vocal right now, so I was trying to hold on. It's okay. Um, the first year was definitely difficult. Um, it was... Um, 
can it. <laughs> um, I think we were dealing with some of the same things of ex- expectations, and um, also we we lived together before we got married. Um, but we, you know, we had bought a house, so we were also trying to deal with our finances changing along with, um, or, you know, our financial responsibilities changing along with planning for a very big wedding um, that we were also paying for. And then just, you know, living together, you know, neither one of us really had any furniture, so it was like, you know, it was always a new expense and, um so now, you know, I guess it is just, yeah, that first year is just something. You really don't know that person, really, and, you know, until everybody gets comfortable and settled. And it's like, okay, well, you here, we married, we got the ring, and now the real work begins. And everybody told me that, and I was not prepared. But um, I definitely tell a lot of newlyweds, um, I tell a lot of newlyweds that that first year thing is real and it's not it's not abnormal. It's to right. be expected. I think that's what I really want to get across that it's not abnormal because sometimes people say, "Oh, the first year is hard," but because they're so vague about it, you're like, "Oh, it's gonna be hard, but it's not gonna be this hard." And then when you get in and it's that hard, you like, mm-hmm. "Ain't nobody said it was supposed to be this hard." You know what I mean? Like you just get there, and even too. <laughs> Because we lived together before we got married, too. And I felt it was a little bit easier. Like, I had grown my blog. Like, I would ask Adam to take out the trash. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, baby, I'll take out the trash. And then when we got married, he was like, the trash ain't even full. Like, it ain't that big of a deal. You trying to tell me what to do? And I'm like, I just need the trash taken out because it was smelling bad. <laughs> and I put some chicken in it, you know? Just so much, too. And I, instead of me hearing his responds as just him responding and, you know, my response being in kind, his, you know, my reaction would be, so you tell him you can't take out the trash, and then it would just escalate into something about something as small as trash. Like, that's how small an argument could start, and then it would escalate to something where I'm packing my bags. <laughs> I'm leaving because I feel like I can't take it. So, Staina, how was y'all's first year? Um, for us, I have to say, I think our first year was pretty easy. Um, when we got married, I too was pregnant with our daughter, and so we were in the whole newlywed, um, you know, first baby for him. Everything was, you know, fresh and wonderful. I think that years two through eight <laughs> have been have been the years when we're saying. I want to get that divorce. You know that divorce? Yeah, we could go back and get that. Um, But it's also been, you know, it's been give and take. It's definitely been, um, my husband is one to say, I'm not going nowhere. You, you're stuck with me. We're going to, we're going to work this thing out. Whereas for me, I'm like, look, Negro, I was independent before I got with you. I can be independent after you and I had to really learn um, that it's not about me and and that marriage really takes time and effort and patience um, and a lot of other things that nobody teaches you um, that you just have to learn and when you make that vow you just have to be in it um, truly for good times for bad times for richer for poor because you definitely gonna be a lot of poor um, but, um, it, I mean, it, it works out, but I think that in the back of our minds, I think that the divorce word is always like a safe spot where you figure I can always get that divorce. Um, and, and it's, I had to really sit down with myself really lately and say, nah, that divorce thing is really not an option. You're just going to have to make this thing work. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's, um, I don't think it ever goes away. <laughs> That, that word, it never goes away. Don't be fooled. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know Kia and, and Kira have only been married for, you know, a few months, you know. And Kira, I know he's in the room, so you don't have to share if you don't want to. But, <laughs> you know, have you guys, uh, you know, ever reached that moment where you're like, I'm done, breaking point. Breaking point is this today. I got to go. Yeah. Um, I know you're saying like I, you don't have to share because you know it did come up. Um, you know we're come we'll have a a year um, at the end of this month on the 29th as I said before, 
Um, it's really only come up once. You know, of course, it came out of my mouth. And <laughs> and I meant it. Like, um, you know, I think, you know, it just, for me, uh, we didn't live together beforehand. And, you know, this year has just, this past year has been a whirlwind. You know, between wedding, um, you know, we sold a house, bought a house, moved. You know, I got a new job. You know, he got a, a promotion. You know, so it was just, it's just been a lot going on. Um, you know, just, you know, we came in like empty, you know, I've been purchasing furniture and decorating, like, you know, I spent all my time like sitting here trying to figure out how I'm going to get this house together. So, you know, we do have a lot of stressors and I think we're still at that phase where, you know, we spend all of our time together. And I think that's also why the first year is, has, you know, is pretty hard, you know, across the board because you, you just think, you know, like I'm, I'm married to this person. I'm supposed to be spending like every waking moment with, with that person, um, and I think that's, yeah, I think as we kind of go through, you know, we'll realize that that doesn't always have to be the case, but, you know, for now, like we like it and that's what we're doing, but, you know, I don't think I can spend all my time with anybody, like, you know, even growing up, like, you know, my sibling, my sister would be like, all right, you know, the first couple hours, first couple of days were cool, you know, so for seven years, you know, I had never lived with another person and he had always lived alone as well. So just kind of that coming together, it's like, sometimes we're like oil and water, and we just go through those phases. Um, but the time when divorce came up, it was like <laughs> I was seeing clear as day. I was envisioning my life, like, you know, as a glamorous divorcee. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to say this out my mouth. And I did. And he was just like, <laughs> like they always, you know, <laughs> they always like, just like totally started. And I'm like, wait, are you, have you been talking to me for the last 30 minutes? Like, how, how could this not be an option? Like, you know, why are you not bringing it up? Um, you know, so I think, you know, um, like you had said, he's also very, like, you know, divorce isn't an option. Like, you know, he's one of those. And I literally, like, I say one of those because I'm not one of those. You know, I've, I've seen my family through, you know, my parents through three divorces. So I'm not going to sit here and say that I don't believe in it because I don't really think it's something to believe in. But, you know, Jeremy is very much like, no, I don't believe in it. Like, you know, that's not happening. You know, and every once in a while we get the jokey, like, you know, I'll kill you first. But it's not really funny, but, like, yeah. you know, we, we've we been yeah. here, too. So if I come up missing, you know, y'all know where to look. But um, I think, uh, I think you know, this first year, you know, hopefully I never have to say it again. Um, but uh, it was almost like a, it was almost like a, the, once the word was said, it was a kind of a straighten up and fly right type situation. So, you know, I'm glad I said it. I meant it. And, uh <laughs> We moved on from there. Good. <laughs> yeah. So for me, I don't know if Ernest remembers that I've been married before, so I am divorced and remarried. Oh, my goodness. You're right. I missed that. <laughs> no, so, I'm um, <laughs> so I think that this time around is absolutely completely different with a completely different person. I think my mindset is different. Um, I think that the first year of me and my husband being in a relationship, was kind of like the first year of marriage for me as compared to my first marriage um, because we had a lot of issues mainly like you know he's a mama's boy and he has an older sister who he also was like a mother to him as well so we had those issues I have a stepdaughter then I became pregnant so we went through a lot of our intense issues prior to us actually getting married so I will say in the last five months that we have been married we have definitely had you know arguments and different things but I think the way that I approach it is completely different and think about it I mean sometimes it does fly by my head like mm, did I make the right decision this time because this time is forever um, I think it's more of compromising and really realizing and knowing myself this time whereas before I was younger I was still in college and I had a low tolerance for a lot of things so I was quick to say oh I can't do that oh I can't do this Whereas this time I think about it completely different. So that would be a good question probably for him. <laughs> for me to see how he really feels about how the first, you know, five months has gone. That's good. I totally forgot you You were married in college. Yeah, next time I had DDS. Oh, Don't do it. They need to talk about, you know, just that, that what, what is that breaking point? You know what I mean? Where you feel like, okay, like I can't, this is not, you know, we can't recognize. That everybody is different. Um, I think it really just depends on a lot of things, how you were raised, your current environment, your environment, um, you know, your mindset, your maturity level. 
um, what the person actually did to make you say that this bond is broken and we can't fix it. You know, does that other person actually want to fix it? You know, you know me. My ex-husband had DDS, and in saying that, um, you know, he cheated and had another baby, and I truly tried to work through that situation, but he wasn't really willing to fix our marriage from that. So then. It was, you know, we our bond was broken at that time, so divorce was the only option. What's DDS? Dirty Dick Syndrome. <gasps> <laughs> You're so white woman. Lord, I love it. I was that. so on my way to Googling it because I didn't know what it was. Oh, I made that up a long time ago. That's, that's, that's when you got a nasty man that likes to sleep with a whole bunch of people. And then he made it. Yeah, DDS. Good one. I like it. I was like, he was a dentist? What? I know. I'm like, wait. D-D. I love it. Okay. So, Santa, did you have a big wedding? Um, well, actually, we actually, um, we got married twice, actually. Okay. Uh, the first time, we literally got married probably... Three weeks after he proposed, um, we just kind of went over to his parents' house, who his father happens to be a pastor, and his parents and my parents, and we got married. And um, we purchased these little cheap rings from Walmart, and after the wedding, we happily went back and returned them. <laughs> and then we had a big wedding in November, which we had a good, probably about three, three or four hundred people um, at that wedding. This, you said this past November? No, no, November, oh, eight wow. years ago. No. Oh, wow. Okay. The, the problem that we tend to have is we never know which anniversary we want to celebrate. Either we're going to celebrate in August or we're going to celebrate in November. So we've had a few years where it'll literally be the end of the day on our anniversary, and we'll be like, today was our anniversary, huh? Oh, yeah, we'll just wait till November and celebrate that one. <laughs> What did do you feel like the wedding brought a lot of stress into your marriage? Um, no. Actually our wedding um was really simple. I had um we really weren't supposed to get married till like a year later. Um, but in the midst of, you know, after the initial wedding or the initial one at his house, um I went out and I purchased my dress and everything and then I found that I was pregnant and David's bridal would not allow me to return or exchange my dress so because of that we had to push the wedding up in order for me to fit this three thousand dollar dress that we had just paid for so that's why we had to do it but the wedding I I really didn't care about it um so we just kinda we had someone that planned the whole wedding and I just kinda was like you know I just wanted to be red and white and I wanted to be about love do what you want and that was it Okay. Um, Whitney, do you feel like if you could do it again, would you have a wedding? That Like a big wedding like you did? No. <laughs> I would not do that over again. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell people, I mean, because when I think about three to four hundred people, like your wedding, oh my God, that's so intense. We, we had 250, and I feel like it was absolutely out of control. Um... But um, I always recommend now when people are getting married, splurge on the honeymoon. Do not worry about having this big, gigantic wedding. But, I mean, it's easier said than done. I mean, because I don't know if I could have had a small wedding because my family is huge and we're all close. And, oh, you didn't invite aunt such and such. You know, it's, it's a big deal. Yeah. But if you can I always recommend the scale down I thought Kira's wedding was the perfect size nice petite fabulous fabulous um, but the the wedding was extremely stressful for us um, because it was so expensive um, how long did but, you plan? what's that how long did you plan um, I think we were, we were engaged for 18 months 18 months. But we didn't really, really get into like the serious planning maybe for like a year out. So we were like engaged for six months. I was like, oh, great, perfect. And then a year of planning. And it, I mean, it wore us down. I mean, with 
family pressure and um, my husband was a bit of a groomzilla. <laughs> <laughs> So, hey, Jay. <laughs> that, you know, because I always was like, oh, you know, I want him to participate. I want him to care about it. Biggest mistake ever in life. I really wish he didn't care, but he did. I mean, he had a wardrobe change and I did not. Let's just say that. So, <laughs> yeah. It was classic. So, right. right. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> um, Let go. So most, I mean, I think everybody on Hate Notes, I, we didn't have a wedding. I was clearly too pregnant to have a wedding. Uh, we also didn't have any money to have a wedding because I was in law school. And um, I, we were, we had just bought a house and I rather, you know, I decided, he's like, oh, you want to get a really nice ring or a wedding or a house or something like that. It was like a choice. And whatever it was, I ended up getting two out of three. So I, and I was okay with that. I didn't want a wedding. He did. Um. And every, you know, he still, I think for the first few months, he still kept, felt really guilty because his mom was like, oh, you know, you guys should have had a wedding, and what about us, and what about us? And I was like, you don't have no money, though, so I, <laughs> I can't, you know, I just can't get with, you know, if your parents, because if one of our professor parents can, like, put in a few thousand, then maybe, but I can't put it all in, and then just, I can't. So uh, I think he felt guilty for a while, and then the more weddings he started to attend and his friends started to get married, who either didn't have weddings or they really did have weddings, he started to see, like, okay, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so, you know, for me, I don't feel like I missed out on anything. Sometimes I look at people's pictures, and I, like, I look at, like, the pictures from Whitney's wedding and Kira's wedding, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's such a beautiful, such a beautiful moment in time to capture that. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know where that money would have came from. So, you know, I I feel okay that I didn't have a wedding. I, I mean, three, four years, I don't know, three years in, I'm, I'm okay with it. But sometimes, you know, he'll feel like, oh, maybe we should have a wedding. And then we start thinking about what he wants food-wise because that's what it really is for us. It's not me or wardrobes. Or, it's food. So if the food's not going to be right, he's not going to have it. So if we were to go anywhere and have it, it would be a $50,000 reception. And I have student loans. Um, yeah. And if Kira keeps calculating how much my interest is at <laughs> I'm not going to be able to ever have anything in life. So, uh, you know, I didn't have one. And I think to me, I'm okay with it. I feel comfortable. And sadly, when I think when I was in my, I'm getting a divorce phase, I was like, well, I ain't got nothing to lose. No way. Because ain't nobody bought me no gifts. <laughs> That was that wasn't what I was supposed to be thinking or feeling, but that's what that's how I felt. I didn't feel guilty to feel that way because I didn't owe nobody nothing. So you know that's not the way to think about it. I want everybody. To, I like, never once thought about those gifts though. I never that <laughs> never even cried. I never felt I owed anybody anything. I was like, look, I gave it a shot. Yeah, I mean, shoot. I, that's how I felt, you know. So. Uh, I mean, I think I just want to touch on the stress about weddings and stuff like that just because I feel like, you know, for those who aren't married yet, you know, it's something to think about, like how big you want it to be, how much it will change the dynamic, how much it will bring into your life. Um, Akia, did you want to say something? <laughs> it's absolutely stressful. We plan our well, I planned our wedding in four months. My mother was my coordinator. We dropped our guest list from about 500 to 200 which means that we had to cut out. So I'm one of nine kids, if you count my step-siblings, and he's one of seven, and everybody has children. And it was really important to me to have the children there because we have a son, and he has a daughter. Um, so we had to start cutting on people. I was like, if they aren't your first cousin, they can't come type of thing. Um, not only that, we had to find a venue in the budget because my parents did help us contribute, but we still had to you know, do the rest of it. And we bought everything. Like it was a wedding on a budget, but I really it was important to me this time to have a wedding because for my first marriage I went to Justice Peace. My dad didn't get to walk me down the aisle. So it was really important to me to have a wedding and I think it was also important to my husband to have a wedding. But we didn't want it to get crazy at the same time. And I think that it became very stressful because I was also that bride that really wanted to include him and have his opinions about things. And then it became too many opinions. And then, you know, I was like, oh, let's phone a friend. What? Who in your family can do what? Oh, your mom bakes. Can she bake our cake? 
oh, she bakes our cake good, so that's saving $900 is really how it started with me about trying to save money and to be less stressed with the entire you know situation, but still making sure that it was nice, it was lovely, and we had a good time. Um, we did not go on a honeymoon yet, um, but it was really at the time more important to have a wedding, but I would definitely say as the bride to make sure that you take time for yourself. Make sure that you and your fiancé take time together as well because... We were at odds even like the day of our wedding. We had a ring debacle, and I was cursing him out that morning, crying all day. It was just a very, very stressful day up until the actual ceremony. I will say, I think um, for me, uh, you know, I had a very small wedding. Um, it was 60 people, and I could have gone smaller. Like, I just remember how much fun I had at her niece's wedding. You know, I got on the red line from work. <laughs> so was, we had a good uh, time. So like, bitter. Nobody was even invited. at the wedding. <laughs> nobody was even invited. I got married at my judge's office. No one was invited, but Kira, Tamara. I was invited. What are you talking about? That's not nice. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Not to put anybody on blast, but yes, I was invited. Okay, I don't know. Was a, was I'm out. taking it personal that I was not. So nobody, still, nobody was invited. It was, <laughs> I was, to as I was the witness, as possible as low key as possible. I just really just did not want attention like that. And Tamara invited herself, and then Chanel got there late, and er, then Adam's friends were mad because they couldn't come. I'm like, y'all, this we can't. 50 people can't be in the judge's office. It's her job. Like, this, we can't. This is doing this special. Like, calm down. It was an in, for for the three people I had. It was an intense moment. It was it was awesome. Like, you know, I really, you know, when I was planning my own wedding, I just remember at times I would just be like, well, let me call up Ernice and see if she, you know, still is in touch with that judge because that was lovely. Like, you know, I went on my lunch break. You know, we had cake. We had cider and then I went back to work and I was like that was beautiful like my friend is married and now they're going to have brunch like or breakfast or whatever it was and you know I think my wedding process was really stressful because you know I, I know a lot of people are like you know we had 200 people we had 400 people but um you know but you all were able to include you know as many people as you could and I think with 60 like I'm from a huge family as well and we're very close but I just was very much um you know, like, I, I think because I'm, I'm, I don't really share my feelings with people, I don't really express myself in front of people, so I was really um, nervous about, you know, saying vows and, you know, ex showing affection, you know, for my husband, like, in front of more people than I would be comfortable, you know, with doing that on, like, a day-to-day -day basis. So I was cutting first cousins, which is, like, totally unheard of in my family. I was pissing off aunts, I was, you know basically banishing myself from some parts of the family, but I think at the end of the day, you know, everybody knows me and everybody knows how I am. So, you know, to have the 60 people there that, you know, really mattered to us, um, you know, was just really important. You know, yes, my mom was like, I'm not paying for <laughs> I'm not paying for that if my so-and-so can't come. So, you know, we ended up paying for the, for the wedding ourselves as well, you know, which, you know, thank goodness, you know, he was able to do not appreciate. <laughs> we got to it alone. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I will say this um, for those um, in planning mode, um, smaller does not necessarily mean cheaper because there are certain things that you're going to have to pay for no matter what. Um, you know, you're going to have to pay, like, you know, venue deposits. You're going to have to pay purchase that cake, and it's really that not that expensive by the slice that, like, shaving off 100 slices is going to make that much of a difference. And that sounds crazy, but, you know, you're still going to have to pay for flowers. Your dress is still going to cost your shoes. Um, you know, and maybe I think because I had my wedding in the heart of a city, that also, you know, made it very expensive compared to other places, but I don't think I saved um, as much money as I would have thought I did. You know, photography is still expensive whether there's five people or... Uh-oh. Yeah. And then, you know, the hunt as well. So I think, um, I think, you know, I ended up spending as much money as, as some other budgets that I've heard which was really, you know, shocking to me. Um, but, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. Like, if it doesn't matter to you whether you have 100 people there or 50, like, the money, it's really not going to be that much different because you still have to meet uh, catering minimums, beverage minimums, and all of that stuff. So. Nicole and Brianna, do you guys, since you guys have all these different women here, you know, newly married, been married before, got <laughs> married on their way, Got a little bit of wisdom in here from Saina. Do you guys like want to, you know, talk about your fears or any questions that you have? Because sometimes it's 
hard to ask like older people because they're just sometimes so jaded. They're just like, it's all right, it's gonna work out, it's gonna be fine. You know, they, <laughs> Jesus, they, you, know, <laughs> you know, just pray about it, that kind of thing. But to really ask <laughs> you know, those open, honest questions where you feel like, you know, like I really want to know this, like you know, tell me about that. Um. Well, we're, I heard um, we went, when we were at church, and I, don't, I just want to know if this is true or not, um, it was a married couple, and they basically said that it takes, like, a lot of times when two people, they come together, um, everyone's, like, pretty independent. And then they said it takes 9 to 13 years for that I to become we, and you, you guys start thinking as a couple and making um, decisions cohesively. Um, I want to know, is there any truth to that? Because that's a long time. <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say something real quick. Yes. I was one of those girls, I think, like, you know, when Whitney got married, you know, when her niece got married, like, I feel like they settled into their we very quickly, or at least, you know, with us. You know, and these are my two best friends, and they were just, you know, I'm like, what y'all, you know, what you doing this? We got this, we got that. And I was like, who the F is we? Like, <laughs> what you mean we? We is you and me. Like, you know, so I was very much like, you know, I feel like they settled in very quickly. And for me, I'm kind of like, you know, it's it's even hard for me to be like my husband sometimes. Like I, I'm, I choke up on it because I'm like, that's so awkward. Like, you know, his name is Jeremy. Like, I'm not my husband this, my husband that. But I feel like with these two, they were like, we this and we that. And sometimes it needs to be like my husband. I'm like, I know your husband. I'm at the same time. Like, <laughs> so I think, you know, 9 to 13 years sounds very extreme. So I'm curious what they say because I say y'all weed up real quick. Um, I think for me, like, I think the we, I felt, first of all, I didn't tell anyone on Facebook, like, my, a lot of people in my family didn't know I had even got married, like, cause that's how private I was about the whole situation, um, for a long time, like, I think, I don't even know how long, it was months and months and months, and then people slowly started to, when I, I wouldn't even refer to him as my husband on social media until one day I, I like, posted it, you know, you change your little status and everybody like, y'all married, like, what, you know? <laughs> That kind of thing. Um, I, you know, I literally just shared like our one wedding photo, <laughs> the, you know, like six months ago or something like that. So um, for me, I felt like it was very awkward because I felt like it wasn't traditional, and that was just my own insecurity, just feeling some type of way about how people would view me or think about me, or you know, people. A lot of people. Uh, I had stopped telling people that I was thinking about getting married or that I was getting married, and that's why probably Kira and you know was really the only person who I really welcomed in to that personal space was because she was really really supportive, whereas everyone else was like, "You sure that's what you want to do? How you know that's gonna work out?" Like all that negativity, and to me it was like I already had so much going on. We had already made a decision, and that's what we really wanted to do. Um, so, but even after, even though I was so confident in making my decision, even after I did it, I still like it took me a long time to change my name. It took me a long time to like tell people in my family. Like it took me a long time to refer to him as my husband in public. I would never like say, "Oh my!" Like, and probably just with Kira, that she's probably the only person I'm like, "Oh my husband, this my husband, that." But everyone else, I wouldn't even tell people. Like even to this day, I'm still kind of like. You know, it's just weird to me to be like, oh, my husband, I'm married. Because I just don't want people to think, like, I'm throwing around. I think I'm better than someone who's not married or something like that. I don't know. I still have, like, a weird insecurity about it. But I think we've been married for almost three years. So, we like, sometimes, honestly, I'll be thinking about something really, really hard. Like, oh, this is something we really need to do. We really need to do. And then Adam will call me, like, two days later and be like, you know what, I think we need to do this. And I'd be like, oh, my goodness, I was just thinking that, but I didn't want to say nothing because I already had asked for something else. So I ain't really want to, you know, ask you for nothing else, you know, <laughs> like that. And so it was like, I said, baby number two. We working on that, you know, he because he kept telling me no, and then I kept saying no. So we're we're still working on that. But, yeah, we, we definitely want to have another baby eventually. But, like, yeah. something like that, like, we, um, like, I think it slowly, we think, because I feel like even when I get my check, I feel like I gotta buy this. I gotta buy this. You know, when you get check, I'd be like, I gotta buy this. I gotta buy this. I never really think that maybe I should buy him something. So like when I got my last check, I would like put all this money in his account. He was like, What is this? I'm like, go buy yourself something. Go buy, go buy yourself something next year. But I have been very selfish in this relationship. So um 
Um, I do think it takes really, a, I don't know if it's going to take nine years, but I do think it takes a long time to get to that point where every decision you make, you're thinking about that other person and how it's going to affect your relationship and stuff like that. I do think it takes a long time to really, because I still feel like I'm in a very selfish, independent, you know, take care of me first and then I'll take care of you, which is sad because he really does a lot of nice things for me. Um and I really shouldn't, I don't have to be that way because I don't have to ask for anything. But I still, when I'm telling you, when I get my check, I calculate how much I got to get first before, I, I mean, after bills. Like, when there's money left over, I'm like, okay, I need to get this, my hair done. And, you know, I really don't think, like, maybe he needs a haircut, too, for $25. Like, I should budget that in our budget. So, I don't know, Whitney, what do you, what do you think? I feel like... I mean, I guess, I mean, Kira trying to say I weed up all fast, but I'm pretty sure I did. Um, Because I feel like we, I mean, even, like, we started looking for a house to buy while we were, like, we'd only been dating a couple months. So we got very close very quickly. Um, We were pretty much, like, inseparable from our first date, really. Um, I'm just going to let you finish. Okay, so... Um, so, and I almost feel like now, like, as we've gone on, we've become a little separate, but, like, when it comes to big things, I always am like, oh, you know, I, I do feel like I always take him into consideration. I feel like he takes me into consideration, too. But I, I feel like... Um, um, what... Um, Brianna was saying, like with people saying it takes like 9 to 13 years, it almost may be on it like a deeper level than just considering the, the, your spouse and something else. It's like really moving as a unit and really like functioning as one. Um, I've heard that from other people. And like when I think about my parents, my parents have been married um, about 30, 30, 31 years. And when I think about them, even though my father drives my mother crazy, like they both get on each other's nerves terribly, but they are clearly each other's best friend. Like, <laughs> clear, like they talk about everything. Everything they do, it's like literally it's the two of them. They literally passed out on the same night. I, I was like, going to say that, but I didn't want to bring that up. I was like, remember that time that they both fell on the same night? Right, they both <laughs> fell out, y'all. Like. My father passed out, my mom saw it, and she passed out. Okay. (laughs) That's love. (laughs) So when, and we we refer to it as a double pass out, but it's like, you know, they both (laughs) get on each other's nerves so bad, but they they each have their own independent lives. They both have, like, their own careers, their own hobbies, their own things they do. But as a unit, um, as family decisions go, they've always been on one accord. So I feel like it's kind of deeper than just, like, when you make a decision, you know. It, it's kind of like, when I think about my parents, they literally move as one unit. I'm, I feel like me and Jay are close to that, but not, I mean, obviously not on their level. That way, Jay be like, I have to go play basketball. <laughs> he got to go. Right? Like, I'm now, I need him to do that. Like, if he doesn't go play ball, like, he on your I mind. just need to be in the house by myself sometimes. <laughs> I get it. Okay, Nicole, did you, have, Stacey, you are a special topic, so we're going to save you some time, uh, you know, <laughs> for yourself, because you are the special one. Uh in a whole, and it has nothing to do with being divorced or married. It's just because Stacey's special, y'all. Just trust <laughs> So, uh, Nicole, did you have any questions for the for the panelists? <laughs> I have two. Um, my first question is around how did you guys decide what was the a right amount of time frame from the time you got enge- engaged to when you felt was right to get married. And I'm asking this because here I am, and I'm like, okay, I don't want to be engaged for an extremely long time. I want to be married within two years, right? Here he is. Oh, no, we're we going to be engaged for four years. I'm looking at him like, Ninja, it took me almost four years to get this ring. I'm not waiting another four years to walk down the aisle. You crazy. <laughs> I think everybody is different. Like I said, I planned my wedding. My um, 
husband proposed on our son's birthday. The day he proposed, I was like, oh, this is my date. This is when we're getting married for a month. <laughs> That's all the time that you have. So I think everybody is different for, you know, the time frame that they want to wait to be engaged, and it's a personal thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think for us, a little bit was my um, church guilt, religious guilt of being married and having a baby. Like, because we already had talked about being married before I even got pregnant, and we had already planned on getting married. And so I was like, well, if we're going to do that, then we might as well just get married before we have the baby. And so um, that whole summer, you know, we just talked about it and talked. Like, there was no specific date. We just talked about it. And then one day I finally got the paperwork, and I was like, this will be the day. Like, it was no, you know. And, but I think in both of our hearts we kind of knew, like, it was going to be one day, but we just, it was, you know, we weren't particular, we weren't having a wedding either, so it wasn't that important, so it may be more important for people who are planning. Um, I think we determined our date, um, so this is, you know, this is confession time, you know, Google Hangout confession. We actually started talking about marriage probably within the first two to three months. And, you know, I couldn't believe I was, like, you know, one of those whirlwind romance women. I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, like, am I that, you know, am I, like, a Harlequin romance novel, like, two to three months? You know, we're already looking at rings. And, um, you know, I think we allowed uh, social pressure to kind of, you know, hold us off. Like, you know, I would, I would say, like, you know, I don't want to be one of those women that gets married within the first year, you know, and blah, 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 blah. So I think that kind of affected our timetable. Um, I don't regret that it did because there really, you know, there was no um, harm in waiting, um, you know, and there was really no reason to rush. Um, but I think uh, for us, we ended up waiting. He proposed in September, which was like nine months after we had started, maybe like nine to ten months after we had started dating. Um, I think, you know, we wanted to get all of the family meetings out of the way. He's from Texas, I'm from Philly, and we live in D.C. So, you know, that kind of took some time to coordinate a lot of those visits. Um, but I think we kind of wanted to, like, get outside of the, you know, we've only been together a few months and we're already engaged. But he had the ring after maybe six months of dating. Um, you know, he had ordered it, and, you know, by the time it was ready, we'd only been together for six months. And if my mom knew that, she'd be like, oh, my gosh, like, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> oh my, <God. laughs> my, you know, my mom is insane. So, you know, she would definitely have been, like, scared. You know, so I didn't tell her and after... I mean, he did ask her permission, um, but that was at about the 10-month mark, which was still kind of soon. And then we said, okay, let's wait six months after that. And I'll say this for us, you know, again, Google Hangout confession. Wait, never mind. This is public, so I'm, I'm going to save that confession. Save it <laughs> but, for our personal Google Hangout <laughs> um, podcast. <laughs> but I will say, Brianna, I think, um, I think it is personal, mm -hmm. um, but I will say um, – you know, don't allow too much social, don't allow social pressure to, you know, push you all back if you think you're ready. Like, when people used to tell me when you know, you know, like, I would roll my eyes until it actually happened to me. And then I was like, you know, I know I'm going to get married to this person. There really isn't a reason for us to, you know, wait but too long. There was no harm in waiting, but I wouldn't wait, you know, forever or for when you think people won't roll their eyes because people are always going to say something. I feel like the pressure is real. The pressure is real. For like every time I see somebody, it's, oh, so have you set a date yet? And I'm looking at them like, no, I haven't even thought about a date. I'm thinking about him finishing school. I'm thinking about us starting this business first. I'm thinking about a promotion first. Like, I know I want it to happen not four years from now, but I'm not thinking necessarily tomorrow either. You know what I mean? Right. It's just the constant, oh, when is it happening? When is it happening? When is it happening? And then it's just like, I don't know. I'm not even thinking about that right now. But sometimes there are these people. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Keith. I was going to ask, are these people close to you that are asking the question? Right. <laughs> or are these people, like, you know, random social friends? It's, it's a little bit of everybody. Like, I can't say per se, like, my close family has really been drilling me too hard. They've kind of just gone with the flow and let me do my own thing. But, um... Like, even my, my girls, like, even my own crew, they're like, so, are we having this wedding in 2016? I need to plan. I'm like, girl, I don't we, know. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> don't even let them wait you. <laughs> are we contributing? <laughs> are we doing anything to help out with this plan? Because if it was me, I would have been like, yeah, I'm getting married in January. Would January come? Oh, I meant December. <laughs> I would be super random like that. Um, just because I don't like being pressured. Like, when I figured out for my own, you know, for myself, 
that's when I give you an answer. And if you don't really mean anything to me, I don't have to answer you. I get, and I think that's just me. And I think the other part for me that's so frustrating uh, about not having an answer, it's kind of like, so we're not married yet, right? So I, have, I haven't thrown out the, um, we're going to get a divorce card. But it's, you know, when we get to the points and I'm like, look, I'm not going nowhere, but I'm about to pack up your shit. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it's, it's I'm, real. I'm over Don't you. Don't It is real. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, okay, what was your second question? Um, my second question was, and more specifically for those of you who had your spouses involved in your wedding planning, how in the world did you do that? We're on two different pages. He wants a traditional inside the church wedding. I'm like, come on, it's 2015. Let's explore. Let's go to a beach. Let's do something outside in a nice, pretty scenery area. And he's like, nope, we're going to be in a white in a church going down this. It's like so straight and narrow, traditional. I'm like, come on, can we step outside the box just a little bit? Just a little bit. I was a little selfish when I said that I, I included my husband. I included him for the things that I wanted to include him in, meaning I knew what colors I wanted. I knew, you know, I asked for his input for certain things, but if it didn't really align with what I wanted to a certain extent, I was like, okay, we'll try that. And I definitely tried to accommodate him, and he really wasn't picky, so he wasn't a, a roomzilla by any means. Wow. And he actually kind of frustrated me because he didn't give me the input that I was looking for, and he was kind of frustrated that I was even asking him. You know, because I, I would ask him something simple as, you know, well, what do you want the grooms to wear? I don't care, just pick it out. <laughs> or um, I would ask him, you know, well, what do you want your ring to be like? Then he had a whole bunch of input, you know, for things like that. So I think it was just, it just depends on how much the person involves their fiance because I pretty much had the foundation outline in my head and I told him what that foundation was. Oh, I do too. But every time I come forth with what my vision is, it's oh nope, that color ain't gonna work. Nope, 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 hmm. nope, nope. <laughs> you gotta put girl, your foot you down. Surprise him, girl. You might have to do one of them Buzzfeed weddings, or you just surprise him. He just show up. <laughs> 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 mine, mine was a groom, groomzilla, but I mean, I think this is also a test of um, a theme that you'll have to have in marriage, which is compromise. Mm -hmm. So this is a good practice. I mean, because, and I mean, and when I thought about compromise, it was, it, I think the definition for me changed when I actually got married, because sometimes compromise is just you yielding completely mm -hmm. and like you know picking that battle um but i mean it has to go on both sides like you know because eventually you will be resentful if you feel like you're the only one relenting on certain things so uh, you know you have to find a happy medium like if he doesn't want to do the beach you don't necessarily want to do a church maybe like a hotel or you know like you know something in, like some or like a garden or like you know there's like a like a cute little you know there's all kinds of venues that they have now but you know this is I think this planning a wedding for us was a big test and like kind of like a precursor of what we could potentially run into in our wedding and how we were going to deal with that um, but as far as like the engagement thing um, I think, because we were engaged for 18 months, and we just always, when the the entire time we were dating, we're like, oh, you know what, we'll probably just get married in fall 2010. And so we just kind of always had that, and it, that's just the way it worked out. We didn't, we weren't on necessarily on a timeline, you know, I don't think we really cared. And, and as soon as we got married, people kept asking us about a baby, and it took us like, what, three years to have a baby, you know, so it was like, it's and your girlfriends are supposed to be the ones that have you back. Like, girl, don't worry about it. Like, I'm telling you, don't worry about the timeline. Four years is a little bit long for me, and it me seems too. like it's long for you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, y'all got that's another happy medium y'all gonna have to find. Yeah. So, Stace, bringing Stacy in, I know she's been in and out. Um, to be <laughs> honest, Stacy, um, I was a little afraid to have you in this conversation because I didn't know exactly what you would bring to the Because, you know, I know you like to cut up. So, I didn't know if you were going to come here and cut up um, or if you were going to come here and do right. You seem like you're going to come here and do right. So, you know, um, I you came here in all sincerity. You did. <laughs> I don't know because I know how you do. So, I just, you know, I just like. 
ooh, Stacey gonna come cut up here. I don't know. <laughs> I dropped a very secretive Google Hangout confession, and now you still questioning my sincerity. I appreciate it. I didn't know that was coming, and I appreciate you for sharing this in this space. Um, so now that you're in a new relationship and things are going well, how do you feel like you're going to approach kind of this different than, you know, or, or okay, one thing I guess I want to touch on that Akia kind of touched on because she was previously married, like, what was your breaking point? How did you know, like, this is over? And you don't have to go into any detail or cut up, but, you know, just in the sense of for your personal <laughs> self, like, how did you know, okay, this is, I, I can't repair my marriage, this is it? Well, I knew I couldn't repair my marriage when I saw how my spouse reacted to fatherhood. That, to me, was, and this is like no lie, Google Hangout Confessions, I literally had not even been discharged from the hospital when I started, like, getting my mental plan together to get out of my marriage. So when I saw his reaction, I was like, you know what? Um, this is not going to work out. So, you know, then I started like putting a plan into action. It wasn't, it definitely wasn't a wake up and I feel like this today, I'm leaving today. It wasn't nothing out of the movies, but um, it was a plan and it, I did so. I felt pretty responsibly considering we share a child. Um, but I think that it goes back to what my ideal of the perfect person for me would be nobody's perfect I know but for me the person that I would be able to grow with is somebody who responds to fatherhood favorably and that changed the whole way I began to look at my ex-spouse so that was like you know my end point for that so like moving forward so you would you know are you interested in getting married again is that something that's on the table yes I love love honey listen (laughs) (laughs) I love I do I love the institute of marriage believe it or not I mean I'm very strong willed but I just love the concept it's just a beautiful thing it's not easy it is very hard and challenging and I think what I would do differently um, just simply put is just to for me, you know, shut up sometimes. That's very difficult for me to do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm not a very yielding person. I just have never been. But um, there are certain things that I learned from my first marriage. I always tell newlywed couples, I can't tell you how to make one work, but I can tell you what will make one fail. Mm-hmm. And that's just as valuable as knowing what's going to make it work. I, you know, you know, I can tell you the things that's not going to go over so well. So I think from my first marriage, I just would be more realistic, more reasonable. I got married when I was 19, so my expectations were all kinds of unreasonable. But by the time I had a child when I was like, I was about 21, 22, I had a better grip on what's appropriate, what's going to work for me, and what's not. So now that I'm more resolved in who I am, first of all, and then what I can and can't deal with, I'm better able to assess, okay, this is what I contributed to this situation, and this is what I won't do again, as far as on my end is concerned. So... I love it. I mean, anybody who loves you, he got to be a good man, honey, because he got to love you, your sisters, your mama, and your dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't forget to love Yes. Hold on. Hold on. We got to love the Wells and all the Baltimore, because they come through. Yeah, girl, all the Baltimore, yes. yes. So if you meet one, you meet them all. Pray for them. Grandma and her Keep mother. them uplifted in prayer. <laughs> always, always. Oh my goodness, this was so fun, and we haven't even. I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface of really things that I really wanted to get into or talk about. And so I definitely feel like we should definitely have another one. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so there's only seven of us, and I think there can be a max of ten. So hopefully we can bring in some new participants. And if everyone enjoyed the conversation, um, you can definitely feel free to come back. I'll definitely send an invite to you guys first to make sure you guys get an opportunity to come. I want to thank everybody, my loves, Whitney, Sana, Stacy, Nicole, Kira, Brianna, and Akia for joining me tonight. I think this was a, such a positive and powerful conversation that took turns that I didn't expect. Um, definitely a lot more positive than I even expected. I was like, oh, I hope people don't think we're going to be bashing our husbands and bashing marriage. And, you know, because I don't think that was our, you know, the concept, but a little bit of what I've talked about with other women have kind of just, you hear the same things over and over, you know, basically. And it's, it's just about who plays what in a marriage, you know, just like I didn't expect Nicole to be the messy person because my husband's the messy person. So I'm like, you know, just that false expectation that all women are always the tidy person. And, you know, I'm the messy. <laughs> you know, so 
I think we definitely want to talk about some dynamics and about, you know, who plays what role and how important that plays into your relationship and, you know, the spirituality of relationship and uh, how that plays into everything. So I feel like there's so much more to talk about. Um, and so since this was like the first one, very generalized, very broad, next time we'll like pick a specific topic and post out some questions and stuff like that. So thank you guys so much for joining me. This will be posted on YouTube. I'll share the link for everyone to share with their friends and stuff like that. So I hope everyone has a good night. I know it's late on the East Coast. Be safe out there because that ice is no joke. It's 80 here, but it's about 8 there. Um, so I'll run some shade. shade. Right. <laughs> no shade. No shade. I, I feel shade because I live in Texas too and it ain't 80 in, in northern Texas. What the heck? What? <laughs> it was 88 today. So, uh, but I'll definitely be in touch with all of you guys. Thank you guys for joining me and I hope we can talk soon. Have a good night. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye.